Hey guys, um, this is a repeat discussion of what we just did a while ago because uh, nagkaroon ng te technical issues between the app that I'm using for live streaming and for the coaching. So I'll just repeat this. Um, this is a uh, brief overview of the importance of oxygen dissociation curve. I will not be able to discuss the reasons why certain factors will cause a shift to the left or shift to the right, but our objective tonight is just to let you remember um, the parts of the graph, um, para saan siya, anong ibig sabihin niya, and uh, the causes of the shift to the left and the shift to the right. Okay, so let's start. The oxygen dissociation curve or the ODC will look something like this. Okay, this is your oxygen dissociation curve here. Um, this curve depicts the oxygen affinity of hemoglobin. So, para mas maging simple, um, itong graph daw na to ang magpapakita ng relasyon ng ating oxygen at ng ating hemoglobin. Okay, ganun nila kamahal ang isa't isa kung normal lang ba ang amount ng pagmamahal nila sa isa't isa or... Um, Sobrang um, mahal na mahal nila ang isa't isa at ayaw nilang i-let go. Or yung um, shift to the right na sinasabi natin ay eh, yung unti-unti uh, nang nawawalan ng affinity ng ating hemoglobin sa ating oxygen. Okay? So, again, the oxygen affinity of hemoglobin can be um, shown using a graph that we call the ODC. And again, this describes the relationship between the hemoglobin, oxygen, saturation, and the partial pressure of oxygen. And so, if you are asked, ano po ba yung parts ng graph na yan, dapat may masasagot mo siya, like sabihin mo, y-axis po, nakikita ang percent saturation ng hemoglobin, at so, x-axis po, nakikita ang oxygen tension or partial pressure of oxygen. Okay? So, basically, no, it's, uh, subukan lang natin identify yung parts ng graph. Ito po yung ating y-axis, alright? And sa so y-axis po natin nakikita yung dami ng hemoglobin na nagbabind kay oxygen. So, pag nagsimula ka rito, diba, that's zero, wala, hanggang sa maging 20, 40, 60, 80 percent. So, as you move along this axis from the lower to the upper part, that means more and more oxygen is being bound to our hemoglobin, right? This is our um, x-axis, yung ating horizontal line. And that means, no, uh, or that shows as the pressure of, partial pressure of oxygen na usually ay uh, ginagamitan natin ng unit na TOR. Sometimes, millimeters of mercury, no, so familiarize yourselves with the units used to um, measure the partial pressure. So, oxygen po yung pinag-uusapan natin dito. Okay, so that means when you start in this area, you have no zero pressure, right? Because that's the origin. And as you move along the x-axis, that's your horizontal line right there, um, papunta ka dyan sa area na yan, that means more and more uh, or higher uh, and higher oxygen tension uh, meron tayo. Okay, so you have 20, 40, 60, 80, pataas ng pataas pag mas papunta ka sa kanan ng x-axis. Okay? So, ulitin lang po natin, no? Ang una natin ginagawa ay inaalam natin yung parts ng graph. So, again, this graph is called oxygen dissociation curve. Ang purpose niya sa buhay natin is to show us the, the relationship of our hemoglobin with our oxygen using the y-axis for the percent saturation of hemoglobin and the x-axis um, uh, depicting the oxygen saturation. Uh, sorry, it's the <laughs> oxygen um, pressure. Okay, so y-axis percent saturation and x-axis percent um, partial pressure of oxygen. Okay, so uh, i-define natin bakit ba may tatlong kulay dito sa graph na to. Okay, yung tatlong kulay na yan ay may ibig sabihin. Yung kulay green po ay ang ating normal curve. Yung kulay red po ang magiging shift to the right. At ang, um, ang kulay blue linya natin ang magsasabi sa atin ng shift to the left. Alright? So, uh, para maintindihan mo yan, i-define muna natin yung dots. Bakit ba may dots dyan? Yung dots, 
na yung dots na yan ay yung tinatawag natin P50. So, ito pong P50 value na to ay yung pressure ng oxygen kung saan 50% daw ng hemoglobin ang nasa-saturate or napupuno ng oxygen. No? Parang sinasabi mo gaano kataas dapat ang oxygen pressure para mapuno mo ang isang hemoglobin molecule ng 50% oxygen. Okay? So, sa tao daw, para um, um, mapuno natin ng 50% oxygen ng ating hemoglobin, kailangan ang pressure ng ating oxygen ay nasa 26. So, that's about at this area. Right? So, pag uh, in-interpret natin yung dot na yan along the x-axis, that's here, no? That's about 26 tor. And again, at 26 tor, 50% na po ng hemoglobin ang ating uh, saturated with oxygen. So, yung isang, kung ikaw yung hemoglobin, ang daladala mong oxygen at that pressure is 50% already. Okay? So, that, what, that, that is what 50, 50, 50 value is telling you. No, at uh, anong pressure nagkakaroon ng 50% saturation ang hemoglobin ng oxygen? Anong pressure ka napupuno ng 50% kung ikaw ang hemoglobin? Okay? So, um, pag mas lumayo siya, so katulad nito, no, sa kulay red, yung kanyang P50 value ay mas lumayo. No? Kung interpret natin yan, that's about here, 40, right? So, mas tumaas ang P50 niya. So, that means... Kailangan pang umabot no, ng 40 partial pressure of oxygen para lang mapunong mo ng 50% ang hemoglobin. So, that means, um, hirap na hirap kang makapuno. No? Bakit, bakit, hindi, bakit hirap na hirap kang makapuno ng, ng oxygen sa hemoglobin mo? That be, that's because if you have higher P50 value, that indicates a lower binding affinity of hemoglobin. Okay. Samantalang kapag tinignan mo yung P50 value ng kulay blue na line, right? Diba? Mas um, mababa siya. So, pag ininterpret natin yung ating um, blue na line, uh, P50 value here, that's about here, right? So, less than 20 ang ating pressure. So, that means, wala pang 20 millimeters of mercury or wala pang 20 tor, punong-puno ka na agad ng ating, hemoglobi, uh, ng ating um, oxygen. Okay, kunwari ikaw yung hemoglobin na sa 20 wala, wala pang 20 um, partial pressure of oxygen, punong-puno ka na ng, ng ng oxygen, no? That's because if you have a lower P50 value, that means higher binding affinity of hemoglobin. Kumbaga, sa levels ng kalandian, no, sino ka dito? <laughs> Are you a shift to the left or a shift to the right? Kasi pag sinabi mo shift to the left, konting landi lang sa iyo. Nung konting, hi, hello, bumibigay ka na agad kasi ang taas-taas ng affinity mo sa kanya. Gustong, 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 gusto mo siya. Nung kilig na kilig ka na agad. No, 20, 20, uh, wala pang 20 yung pressure na binibigay niya sa'yo, 50% kilig na kilig ka na. Okay, samantalang kung ikaw ay i-describe as a shift to the right, okay, no, lumagpas na siya yung effort niya, lumagpas na sa normal kasi ang normal nga 26, eh, yung kanyang effort niya 40 na. Hindi ka pa masyadong kinikilig. Alright? No, kikiligin ka lang pag mas mataas pa yung pressure na uh, bin binibigay sa'yo ng ating um, oxygen. Okay? So, ito po yung mga tao na medyo hard to get. Yan, yung mga taong sinauna yung ipinagsisibak ng kahoy, na ipinag-iigib ng tubig para lang maging 50% saturated with oxygen. Ito, ito tayo kasi... Ano tayo, marurupok tayo, no? konting chat lang tayo, kilig na kilig na agad tayo. Okay? So, that means, again, higher P50 value will mean lower binding affinity. Kasi ang hirap-hirap punuin ng ating hemoglobin ng oxygen pag mas mataas yung P50 value. And kapag mababa ang P50 value, that means a higher binding affinity, walang kahirap-hirap mapuno ang hemoglobin ng oxygen kasi ang taas ng affinity mo sa oxygen. Okay, so I hope that's clear. All right, so so far what we did is uh, we um uh, defined what an ODC is. We explained the parts and we explained the P50. So it's now time to look at the the factors that will affect our curve. Okay, pay attention first to the um, green line. So yung green line na yan is the normal shape. 
of the curve. No? In normal situations daw, ang ating curve ay sigmoid. And when you say sigmoid, that is an S-shaped um, substance or um, thing or stuff. Okay? So, sigmoid shape siya. Alright? So, when we want to interpret this, you, you see, ito po yung area na sobrang baba ng oxygen. So, ito yung mga area ng mga tissues natin na sobrang-sobrang may pangangailangan sa oxygen. Kaya, pag nandyan ka dyan sa area na yan, ibig sabihin, agad-agad na i-release ng hemoglobin mo yung oxygen na daladala nila. Kasi, di ba, um, um, tawag dito, um, kailangan ng cells natin yun. Alright? And as you go along this curve, you will see here, no, pag nandito ka na sa area na to, uh, that means 100% saturated na ating hemoglobin ng oxygen. Okay? So, that's the normal curve. Alright? So, pag hindi siya normal, no, nagkakaroon tayo na shift to the left or shift to the right. So, tuwing kailan po tayo nagkakaroon na shift to the right. When we say shift to the right, that means again, ito po yung P50 mo, mas lumayo, no? So, that means mas mababa ang affinity mo sa oxygen. At dahil mas mababa ang affinity mo sa oxygen, mabilis mo siyang may -re release sa mga tissues, no? Hindi mo kasi siya masyadong... Um, Gusto eh, kaya madali sa yun na ipamigay ang oxygen. And that's because physiologically, this, uh, in these situations that um, cause the shift to the right, yung mga tissues natin or yung cells natin ay nangangailangan talaga ng more oxygen. Okay? So, again, when you have a shift to the right of the oxygen dissociation curve, that tells you yung mga uh, sitwasyon no, na kakabisaduhin natin in a while na nangangailangan ng mas maraming oxygen. Okay, at para mabigyan sila ng oxygen, kailangan mababa ang affinity ng hemoglobin mo kay oxygen para maipamigay niya yung daladala niyang oxygen. Okay? So, ang tanong mo sa sarili mo, pag meron kang shift to the right, ano kaya yung mga condition? Okay? Na pwedeng mag-cost ng shift to the right. Kasi ang mga condition na yun ay nangangailangan ng oxygen, uh, more oxygen release to the tissues. Okay? So, when we say shift to the left naman, kabalik ta rin naman ang mangyayari. So, sabi nga natin, pag shift to the left, decrease ang P15 yan. Ibig sabihin, mataas masyado ang affinity natin sa um, oxygen, kaya hindi natin siya ipamimigay. No? Ang tendency mo ay ipagdamot mo kasi gustong gusto mo yung oxygen mo. Alright? So, that will result to lesser oxygen release to the tissues. And again, kung um, tanong ay eh, ano po yung shift to the left, dapat ang masasagot mo yung mga situations kung saan uh, less oxygen is released to the tissues. Okay? So, uh, as I fondly want to remember this, uh, you may um, better understand this or, you know, uh, it can help you remember more kung iisipin mo ito yung stages ng relationship kung meron ka mang experience. <laughs> For example, diba, itong shift to the left, yan pinakang unang stage, yan yung ligawan stage. Kapag gusto mo rin yung, yung, yung nanliligaw sa'yo, for example, ikaw si hemoglobin, tapos si oxygen yung ka-love life mo, right? So, alimbawa, in love naman kayo sa isa't isa, di ba sa unang stage ng relationship, you, you really, really have high affinity, affinity to each other. And so, you promise na uh, you will not let go, right? Di ba? Yung walang, uh, walang iwanan, no? Hindi kita ipagpapalit. <laughs> because my affinity to you is so increased that I cannot release you. I cannot share you no, to anyone else because you belong to me. That's your shift to the left. Okay? That's the first stage. First five years, first ten years ng relationship nyo. Tapos halimbawa, naging mag-asawa na kayo, right? Nung nagpupunta na kayo sa stage na normal na lang lahat. Okay, normal na yung, yung affinity mo sa kanya. Okay lang na hindi kayo magkita ng, ng ganun kadalas katulad nung liga one stage. Kasi you still know that you're meant for each other and all. no And yung pinaka last nating story is when you have a shift to the right of your relationship. Na hindi naman nangyayari sa lahat. No? At ayaw naman natin mangyari sa lahat. Pero kung tatapusin natin yung kwentong to, ito po yung mga na ito tulfo. <laughs> ito yung mga sinusumbong kay tulfo kasi ito yung mga nananawa na. No? Kapag meron ka ng shift to the right sa relationship nyo, sawa ka na. Sawa na ang hemoglobin mo kay oxygen mo. Kaya yung affinity nila, affinity nila bumababa na. Kaya ang tendency, eh, wala na akong pakilam sa'yo oxygen kasi sawa na ako sa'yo eh. Ilang taon na ba tayong magkasama? So I'll just um, give you a way away, right? And um, dahil uh, nagkaroon tayo ng ganyang klaseng relationship, that's 
a shift to the right. Okay? I hope you uh, you can use that um, analogy, no? Pero kung anibawa, virgin ka pa sa mga relasyon at mga heartbreaks na yan, na better um, try to uh, understand bakit ba nagkakaroon ng shift to the left and shift to the right. Okay? So, I hope everything is clear. Okay? And uh, to to finally um, uh, end this, no? I will leave you one funny mnemonic that you can use to remember the factors that can cause a shift to the right. Now, by the way, a technique here is you can just memorize one group. No? Halimbawa, alamin mo lang yung mga factors that will cause shift to the right because kung hindi man yun yung itanong sa exam mo, eh, syempre, yung kabaliktaran yung isasagot mo kasi dalawa lang naman. It's either shift to the right Okay? I always suggest na ito na lang pong shift to the right ang tatandaan natin. Okay? Pero kung gusto mong parehong kabisaduhin, word per word, why not? No? Pero again, mas maganda ang smarter way to to study. And so, if you are given two um, groups to remember, it's always wiser to just know one. And if ever hindi yun yung itanong sa exam, then that automatically tells you na ang sagot ay yung kabilang grupo. So, again, let's look at the shift to the right because there's a funny mnemonic that you can use for this. No? You can say, that when you have a kabet, the right thing to do is to let go. <laughs> a kabet is a mistress, a third party, or, uh, you know, yung mga nakikisaw sa mga, na, mga malalanding kung sino man dyan ang tatamaan. <laughs> so, when you have a kabet, this kabet here ay mga um, initials na mga factors, okay, na kapag nagsisi-increase, ay magkakos na shift to the right. So, sino-sino ba yung uh, akabit na yan? The first A tells you yung altitude. If you have, if you are in a, in a place with high altitude, then uh, you will have a shift to the right. Okay? Kasi sa mataas na altitude, syempre mas mababa yung oxygen doon. Eh, mga nga ilangan ng oxygen yung mga cells mo. So, ang tendency ng hemoglobin mo, eh, ipamigay yung oxygen na nasa kanya. So, again, pag namimigay ka, that's a shift to the right. Alright? Pag mataas po ang carbon dioxide, pag merong kang acidosis, pag mataas ang ating BPG, na by the way, is another name for DPG. Updated, paki-update naman ang vocabulary natin. Si 2,3 DPG, okay, si 2,3 DPG po ay now known as 2,3 BPG. 2,3 DPG is 2,3 diphosphoglycerate, 2,3 BPG is 2,3 uh, bisphosphoglycerate, no? They are the same. Okay, so you either use B or D, pero para mas magandang pakinggan, B na lang para kabet. <laughs> Alright? So, pag mataas ang 2-3 DPG mo, that's, that, that's one cause of shift to the right. And then when you're exercising, because you're releasing lactic acid and all, no, um, that's also one cause of shift to the right. And if you have an increased temperature. So, everything here is increased except yung ating acidosis, no? Kasi common naman, common knowledge naman kapag acidosis, ang sinasabi natin, no? That refers to our pH and acidosis will be associated with a low pH, no? Pero, pag yung word na acidosis na yung natandaan mo, madali na yan. Everything else that will, um, pag nag-increase, ay eh magkakos ng shift to the right. Okay? So, a shift to the right will mean, again, no, let me just erase the other um, things here. A shift to the right will mean, uh, that the hemoglobin molecule has decreased affinity to oxygen and so the tendency is to let go of the oxygen that they carry because the tissues in these situations need more oxygen. Okay, so again, to remember this in a funny way, you say, when you have a cabet, the right thing to do is to let go. A cabet would be the factors, shift to the right ang ikokos nila, and when you have a shift to the right, you will let go of the oxygen that you're carrying if you are the hemoglobin molecule. Okay, so I hope that helps you to remember the the factors that um, affect our um, oxygen dissociation curve. So if ever team left ka naman, shift to the left ka naman, gagawin mo naman yung mababa lahat. No? Except of course, again, um, the pH. So kung shift to the left ang kakabisaduhi mo, gagawin mo yung alkalosis. Okay, so... Um, whatever suits you, okay? Pero again, this is a mnemonic that I hope everyone can make use of para matandaan nila ang mga um, 
uh, factors that will cause a shift to the left and shift to the right. So basically, what we did tonight was to uh, remind ourselves of what ODC is, parts ng ating graph, anong ibig sabihin ng P50, at inalam natin yung mga um, factors that will cause a shift to the left, shift to the left, and shift to the right. So I hope everything is clear. If you have questions, let me know. All right, and um, I'm sorry I cannot make this any longer and more specific, but uh, I hope you'll um, watch out for more videos that I'll be uploading for the next few days. Okay, uh, I'll, wrap it, I'll wrap it up tonight. So I'm wishing everyone a um, very well productive night ahead, especially for those who are going to take the the, the upcoming board exam, no, pang, pang doctor man or pang med tech man, and may God be with you. God bless you all, and remember that God will always be there for you. So hang on, you can do you can do this. All right, good night, everyone. Bye bye. I'm gonna end this right now.